We all love the films of Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Donnie Yen, Michelle Yeoh, and many more people who are staples of kung fu cinema. But there is someone behind the scenes that people forget. Raymond Chow is an important figure in all of these people's lives. And if you love their movies, then he should be important to you as well. Sadly, on November 2nd, 2018, Raymond Chow passed away at the age of 91. This video is meant to be a bit of a history lesson on his life and his production company, which is responsible for some of the greatest films in the martial arts genre. Raymond Chow was born in Hong Kong on October 8, 1927. Chow would migrate to Shanghai after his father's death. There, he attended St. John's University, where he graduated and returned home in 1949 with a BA in journalism. Chow studied martial arts under Lam Tsai Wing, a man who himself studied under martial arts legend Wong Fei Hung before his death in 1925. Based on what I could find on Lam Tsai Wing, Chow most likely studied Hung Ga, which is a southern Chinese martial art belonging to the southern Shaolin styles. In 1951, he joined the Voice of America office in Hong Kong. Voice of America is a U.S. government-funded international radio broadcast source that serves as the United States federal government's official institution for non-military external broadcasting. In all honesty, I'd love to cover more about Chow's childhood and whatnot, but I couldn't seem to find any info on it, and what I could find didn't come from the most reliable sources. I love you, IMDb, but sometimes your trivia is just kind of garbage. Anyway, after putting his BA to work as a journalist, Chow started work as a publicist in 1958 for a company that in the future would be considered one of the most important production studios in martial arts and Chinese film history, Shaw Brothers Studios. Shaw Brothers began operations in 1925 and is responsible for films like 36 Chambers of Shaolin, One-Armed Swordsman, Five Deadly Venoms, Five Elements Ninja, Heroes of the East, Mad Monkey Kung Fu, Martial Arts of Shaolin, Eight Diagram Pole Fighter, The Avenging Eagle, Dirty Ho, Disciples of Shaolin, Return of the 36 Chamber, The Spiritual Boxer, Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, Mast Avenger, and about another thousand more movies. Chow moved to the production side of the company where he grew tired of the assembly line style of constantly cranking out mediocre films that Shaw Brothers was guilty of at the time. After 12 years with the company, Chow left in 1970 to start his own venture. He had complete insider knowledge of Shaw Brothers' shortcomings, and he was quick to capitalize on them. It was pretty easy when less than a year into his new company, his former employer decided to pass on a relatively new talent, Bruce Lee. Raymond Chow contacted the former Green Hornet actor, and just like that, Golden Harvest landed one of the most important performers in not only Hong Kong history, but film history on a worldwide scale. The demonstration Bruce gave on the TV show was very impressive. He psychic five one-inch boards and broke four. In addition, he kicked and broke a one-inch board dangling. Now that takes tremendous amount of strength and perfect timing. But what impressed me more was when I talked to him on the long distance call. He picked the most popular Hong Kong made action picture at that time and asked a very blunt question. He asked me whether that was the best we could do. I had to say yes. He then assured me with sincerity and confidence that he could do much better. How could I doubt this man? Chow signed Lee to a two-picture deal, and in 1971, Golden Harvest released The Big Boss, a film that became the highest grossing film in Hong Kong's history, even beating out American films. The second film in Lee's contract, Fist of Fury, again became the highest grossing film in Hong Kong. Lee not only signed a new deal with Golden Harvest, but thanks to his friendship with Raymond Chow, the two started another company. Split two ways, 50-50, Lee and Chow started Concord Productions, where Lee covered all creative decisions and Chow handled the administrative side. 
Between all of this success, Golden Harvest had another star in Angela Mao, releasing the films Hop Keto and Lady Whirlwind. The third Bruce Lee film under Golden Harvest contains one of the most famous fight scenes in film history, Way of the Dragon and the legendary battle between Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. Before finishing Bruce's fourth film under Golden Harvest, Game of Death, Chow and Lee would get the offer of a lifetime. Warner Brothers wanted Bruce Lee for an American film. This would be a joint production between Concord, Golden Harvest, and Warner Brothers. This film is, of course, Enter the Dragon. A few months after completion of Enter the Dragon and six months before the premiere, Bruce Lee passed away. Enter the Dragon became one of the highest grossing films of 1973 and just at that moment, Bruce became a legend, an icon, and a symbol. Despite Bruce's reputation and dedication to his craft, the world may never have known him without Raymond Chow. This isn't where the story ends. After Bruce's death, his wife Linda signed his half of Concord Productions over to Chow, and Golden Harvest still had work to be done. After the excitement of 1971 through 73, Golden Harvest found success with a string of comedies under the Hui brothers. They kept releasing kung fu flicks, including Angela Mao films, The Tournament, and When Taekwondo Strikes, but the films of the Hui brothers found massive success through the early 80s helping Golden Harvest supplant the Shaw Brothers as Hong Kong's dominant studio. Also during this time, Samo Hung was building his reputation as a brilliant choreographer. Towards the end of this era of Golden Harvest, Chow would acquire the next star of martial arts cinema, actor, martial artist, and stuntman Jackie Chan. Chan had received previous acclaim with the films Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, Fearless Hyena, and Drunken Master. Chan's first two major films at the studio, Young Master and Dragon Lord, broke previous records set by Bruce Lee. Once he was with Golden Harvest, it didn't take long for Chan to collaborate with Samo Hung and Yuan Bao, who were his childhood friends from opera school. These three created some of the most iconic films in Hong Kong history. They are referred to as the Three Dragons, and they made six incredible films together, including Project A, Wheels on Meals, and Dragons Forever. The latter two films featuring amazing fight scenes between Jackie Chan and Benny the Jet Yurkides. Around the six films made by the trio, they each starred in their own projects. In the same period, Chan starred in and directed Police Story, a film regarded as Chan's magnum opus. The brothers continued to collaborate, but not always as a trio. One or two of them would be the star of the film, and mostly Sammo would be in the director's chair. Each of the brothers would get their own major solo films, with one of my favorites belonging to Yuen Biao in Writing Wrongs. A film that features Cynthia Rothrock, someone that along with Michelle Yeoh and Moon Lee signed with Golden Harvest around this time. Moving into the 90s and Golden Harvest got to dip their toes into some more American projects. Projects that are beloved to a lot of 90s kids. Golden Harvest produced all three 90s TMNT films, having a heavy influence on the editing style. A relationship between Golden Harvest and the Turtles makes a scene like this feel just a bit more special. to the other side of the globe and a new challenger entered the battle. Jet Li had seen some success in the 80s in films like Martial Arts of Shaolin and Born to Defense, but in the 90s, he stepped through the doors of Golden Harvest. 
Despite the previous success Jet Li had seen, it was the Once Upon a Time in China trilogy that took his career to new heights. Throughout the 90s, Golden Harvest found success with Jackie Chan, Donnie Yen, Jet Li, and Michelle Yeoh. Films featured in this period include Super Cop, Legend of the Drunken Master, Iron Monkey 1 and 2, Who Am I, and First Strike. But by the end of the decade, Golden Harvest sent three of their top stars to America. Jackie Chan left to make Rumble in the Bronx and later Rush Hour. Michelle Yeoh left to redefine the idea of what a Bond girl could be in Tomorrow Never Dies, and Jet Li got to prove himself as a marketable star as the villain in Lethal Weapon 4. Jackie Chan got to close out the century with Gorgeous, a film close to his heart with two outstanding one-on-one -on -one battles between himself and Brad Allen. In the 2000s, Golden Harvest started their descent from the top of the movie-making mountain, and in 2003 stopped producing movies after 30 years of phenomenal films. In 2007, at 80 years of age, Raymond Chow announced his retirement and sold Golden Harvest. To this day, the name Golden Harvest harkens back to what could be argued as the golden, silver, and bronze ages of martial arts action on screen. A time ranging from Angela Mao and the meteoric rise and sudden loss of Bruce Lee, followed by the powerhouse presence of Jackie Chan and the Three Dragons, and rounding off with the masterful kinetic energy of Jet Li, Michelle Yeoh, and Donnie Yen. We as fans, the world, and the legacy of filmmaking as a whole would have none of this without Raymond Chow. He brought us legends so that we could build monuments to them. He created superstars that would inspire multiple generations of martial artists. He put badass leading women on the silver screen before Sarah Connor or Wonder Woman. You can't praise suspense films without mentioning Alfred Hitchcock. No one can praise comic books and superheroes without talking about Stan Lee. And you certainly can't love martial arts cinema without paying your respects to Raymond Chow.